Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here at CES 2015 taking a look at some of the... Actually, this is Luke, and today we checked out not only Oculus, but some stuff from Origin and Razer as well. I've been checking out a whole bunch of VR stuff this... VR? VR stuff this year at CES 2015. So, it's time to do the video. The real video now. CES is always filled with TVs, but this year saw cool screens of all types. At the Sharp booth, they had freeform displays that can be made into almost any shape. Right now, they're mostly used for things like gauges and cars, but since there's basically no bezel, these can be used in all kinds of gadgets. They also showed off a wraparound 60-inch LCD display for putting screens on pillars that might not be all that practical, but it's still cool tech nonetheless. There was also a massive 120-inch 4K TV concept that would probably be ludicrously expensive, and then the holy grail of TVs, an 85-inch 8K panel. Yeah. 8K panel. Considering there are only a handful of 8K video cameras in the world right now, this won't be coming out anytime soon, but on such a huge TV, there is a slight but noticeable difference in quality compared to 4K resolutions. It's not night and day, but the amount of detail you get on a 33 megapixel screen is crazy. Over at Sony, they were showing off a monster pair of 4K projectors, which each can go up to 147 inches. They had a serious Back to the Future setup with four 1080p TV shows and a 4K video all playing at once. And if you need to shoot some 4K videos, then the new Sony AX33 Handycam might just be for you. This shoots 4K video for $1,000, half the price of the Sony 4K camcorder they announced last year. It also has some completely crazy stabilization, which is handy if you want to get some awesome aerial shots. DJI has been cranking out some awesome drones lately, and that includes the Inspire 1. Sporting carbon fiber legs and a built-in 4K camera, this is the full package that can be monitored on an iPad up to 2 kilometers away. Of course, this being CES, there were also a few phones announced, and the biggest was the LG G Flex 2. This improved on a lot of my problems with the original, including a smaller, high-resolution screen and the new Snapdragon 810. With it being the G Flex after all, my buddy Lou from Unbox Therapy put it to the Ben test right in the middle of the LG booth and made an awesome video while he was at it. It might seem minor, but one of the biggest things at CES is USB Type-C. This is about the same size as micro USB, but it supports up to 100 watts of power, USB 3.1 speeds, along with DisplayPort for video all with one cable. It's reversible like lightning, so you can plug it in either way, meaning that this single cable could charge your laptop, connect all your accessories, and run a display. Another way of powering a display is with the Alienware graphics amplifier. This is a dock that can handle a full-size graphics card when you connect it to your new Alienware laptop. It's a very cool idea to have portability when you need it, while still having all the horsepower you want once you get home. One of the coolest things I saw was outside over at BMW. They had an i3 that would drive up by itself when you call it with your smartwatch, along with one that doesn't let you crash. You can drive straight toward an obstacle and the car will automatically brake, even if you keep your foot on the accelerator. There was also a Tesla Model X in the Panasonic booth and this was straight up awesome. The Model X is a fully electric crossover that should be joining the Model S later this year, and not only does it look better in person than I expected, but it also has some awesome gullwing rear doors and a sweet interior. So what's your favorite thing you saw at CES 2015? Definitely be sure to let me know in the comments below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Hopefully.